buffer slash common ion problem. Um, and we're going to start, first of all, as soon as I see grams, we know um, that we are going to need to convert these to moles so that we can get our molarities. So very easily, we're going to take the 31.56 grams of NACN. NACN has a molar mass of 49. And the HCN has a molar mass of 27. And so I'm going to divide those out. And then, um, I know this is kind of messy, so let me just kind of write it here. Divide it by 49. And then I'm not even going to work that out because I want molarity, and so I know that my total volume is 600 milliliters, which is 0.6 liters. And then that's going to give me a molarity of 1.07 for the NACN. And I'm going to do the same thing for the... Um, HCN, so that's 22.3 grams, divided by the molar mass of HCN, which is 27, divided by 0.6, and this gets me 1.38 molarity of the HCN. Now, remember that I always tell you that Na is a figment, or group 1s are a figment of your imagination when they're in solution, so really 1.07 molarity is of Cn minus, and that's what we need. And so to determine the pH, I need to know the H plus of the HCN. And pretty much in every one of these um, questions, I'm going to use the disassociation reaction for HCN. And so I'm just going to write it down here, kind of in the corner, that I know that, and we're going to just refer back to this. So I'm going to do this in blue, that HCN disassociates to a very weak acid into H plus and CN minus. And so I can easily find H plus using our X squared over initial um, or our equilibrium expression that H plus times CN minus over HCN is equal to Ka. So as long as I have these values, then it's easy. It doesn't look like an N, it looks like a W. Um, it's easy to calculate the H plus. So when we start this problem, it's very similar to um, an X squared over initial. The only deal is that we have a common ion. We have some CN. Normally, we just have HCN. And we don't have any of the um, salt hanging around. But in this case, we do, So um, or the conjugate base. So to figure out the pH then, I'm going to again write the disassociation. And jumping ahead of myself here, HCN yields H plus plus CN minus. But what I know in this case, kind of um, creating a rice, is that my HCN is 1.38 molar, but my CN minus also has a value, and that's 1.07 molar, but I don't have any H. So at equilibrium, I know that I'm going to... Um, minus x and plus x and plus x so I know what my values are now that I can plug into my equilibrium expression. So if I go ahead and do that, if I plug that in, I know that h plus is x. Well, I know, first of all, that Ka, um, which I forgot to type up there, but the, um, the Ka value for HCN is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. That's given. So let me kind of write that up. Ka HCN, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. Um, that's going to equal, I know, x, and then 1.07 plus x, and 1.38 minus x. But remember, we know the deal. We know that um, we can just omit these x's because this Ka is so small that those x's won't matter. And so that's going to make it very easy to solve this problem. All I have to do is take 6.2 and times it by 1.38 and divide by 1.07 and that's going to give me x. And so my x value on this particular problem is 7.99 times 10 to the minus 10. Well, what is that x value? That x value is my h plus. So then I easily can just minus log this answer. So if I minus log 7.99 times 10 to the minus 10, 
and that's going to give me 9.1 for my pH. So that's the answer to the first one. The pH of the solution is 9.1. Now, the reason why this is called a buffer is that it helps to keep pH constant if you start messing with it. If I add an acid, then the conjugate base will level it out. If I add a base, then the conjugate acid will try and neutralize it. And so working further on here, um, for B, it says, what's the pH after the addition of 500 milliliters of 3 molar HCl? Well. I'm going to go ahead and clear up my page a little bit um, so that we can easily calculate this. And so I'm going to get rid of this here and kind of keep this over here. We're going to need it. Um, and so I'm going to gather up some things that I'm going to need. First of all, I'm going to need some millimoles because I'm adding some stuff. I need to look at the stoichiometry. So I need to kind of get things to moles. But instead of dealing with moles because everything's in milliliters, I'm just going to leave it in millimoles. So I know, I'm going to kind of gather these up, that HCN, I know I have 1.38 molarity, but I have 600 milliliters of it. So I know that my millimoles, HCN, and millimoles are usually, a, a, you know, a, a smaller number, but this particular case, we're dealing with 600 milliliters, so I know I have 828 millimoles of HCN. Now for the um, NACN or the CN minus, I have 1.07 molarity times 600. And so when I get the value for that, that equals 642 millimoles. And that's for the CN minus. And then I also need to know my millimoles for the HCl. So it's just very simply 50 milliliters times 3 molar. So I have 150 millimoles of HCl. Well, in this case, again, I'm going to kind of set up a rice. And so I'm going to have my reaction, HCN. I have H plus plus CN minus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what I've got. I know I have 828 millimoles of HCN, and I have 642 millimoles of CN minus. But I also have 150 millimoles of H plus. And so what happens is, is that these two guys will actually combine and make HCN. Well, when that happens, I'm going to use up, and I'm sorry to um, have to kind of work around this, but I'm going to use up the 150 millimoles of H plus and the 150 millimoles of CN minus, because it's a one-to-one, -one, will also be used. So H plus is my limiting reactant here. So I'm going to have zero of that left. I'm going to have 642 minus 150, which gives me 492 millimoles. But that means I'm going to make 150 millimoles of HCN because I'm using this up. That means H and CN are combining to make 150 millimoles of CN minus. So whenever you have an acid that you're adding, you subtract it from the conjugate base and you add it to the acid. And so this particular case, when I add that up, is going to end up being 978 millimoles. Well, now I'm back, and I can just plug into my equilibrium expression. 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10 equals x. And in this case, oh, wait a minute, it's in moles. Thought it had to be in molarity. Well, it does, but we kind of have an out, and let me show you. I know that I have 492 moles of the CN minus divided by, well, I have 600 total here plus 50, so what is this all floating in? It's 650 milliliters. And then I'm going to divide this by the initial, um, the HCN, the acid, the HCN, so 978 divided by 650 would give me that 
molarity, and then I can work it out. But look, there's two 650s. So I can actually cancel those out. And so now all I have to do is multiply by 978 and divide by 492. And that's going to give me my H plus value, which is my X, which is my H plus value, which equals 1.23 times 10 to the minus 9. So H plus went up from my last question, which means that my pH actually is going to go down because when I minus log this, that's going to give me, so if I minus log, it's going to give me my pH, and that comes out to be 8.9. So I know the value, this answer then, is a pH of 8.9. So now what they want us to do for C is they want us to continue. And so what I want to do, again, I'm just going to kind of clean part of this up, but I want to keep part of it because I need it. So I know now that I have 978 millimoles of HCN. I'm going to extend my page and kind of clean this up a little bit. So I have HCN. I know I have 978 millimoles of HCN. Um, I don't have any H plus at this point floating around. And I have 492 millimoles of CN minus. When I said I didn't have any H plus, it was a very small amount, and that's why it's really not that important to write down. So this is what I'm dealing with. And now to this, I'm going to add some base. So I need to know my millimoles of base. So my millimoles of base, I know that I have 80 milliliters. I'm going to times that by 4, molarity, so I have 320 millimoles. Well, again, what do we do with the NAs? We get rid of it. That's really OH. Well, what does OH do? Well, OH neutralizes acid. And so what's going to happen is, is it's going to come over here, and it's going to react with the HCN but I don't have enough to use all the HCN up. So I'm going to subtract the 320, but I subtracted it from this side because that means that I'm going to take away this H. And so when I take away, so just basically just kind of give me a chance here. If I take away this H, what is left? Well, if I take away the H, what's left is CN minus. So if I take away 320, H's, I'm going to make 320 CN minuses. So I'm going to add. So notice that whenever you subtract from one side, you add to the other. So now I'm just going to add it up and subtract it and work it out, and then we're going to have our numbers again. And so in this case, when we work this out, I end up with 658 millimoles. of HCN, and I end up with, over here, 812 millimoles of CN minus. Again, what are they floating in? Well, they, now, they were initially floating in 600, and we added 50, so that's 650, and then we added 80. So if I do 650 plus 80, I end up with 730 milliliters. So now I'm going to plug and chug back in my same deal again. So my Ka, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10, equals x, 812 over 730, divided by 658 over 730. Oh, again, I'm not going to worry about calculating that 730 in there because they just cancel out. So I'm going to times by 658. I'm going to divide by 812. So when I work this out, again, I still have an H plus. My X, which is um, my H plus value, comes out to be 5.02 times 10 to the minus 10. And when we minus log that to get pH, we end up with a 9.3, which makes sense because I added a base. My pH should go up. But my pH does not go up that much. So notice that we didn't 
go through a huge change in pH through this process. That's why it's called a buffer.